welcome to today's video. We're going to replace the water pump on the Trans Am as well as do the free ram air mod to it because we got a little bit of mail. That is the best day ever. What's this, bud? What is it? He doesn't know what it is either. Okay, so I got the box out in the garage and I can do it with my two little baby hands here. The very large hands, by the way. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? I don't know if you could tell. But uh, we're gonna do some work on the Trans Am behind me, the WS6. We're going to do the... The garage is haunted. I don't know if you knew that. But we're gonna be doing the free ram air modification to the car today. Wrong. The actual Wrong. We'll also be replacing the water pump. I did buy a Gates unit off of Rock Auto. It was, um, I believe it was $75. I'd have to price check that. But at any rate, it was probably 30 or 40 less than any parts store when you get locally in its name brand water pump. It did come with the two gaskets that you need, as well as a thermostat housing gasket, which will go there. The car does have a 160 degree thermostat that I will be reusing, as well as a thermostat housing. So I'll have to retain that. But it should be a pretty straightforward installation. Uh, just a few mounting bolts, and of course, two outlet pumps to the block in the back. The machining's real nice on the back of the Gates pump. Seems like a quality unit. Um, yeah, anyways, it's just a water pump, nothing too spectacular. But I do feel like I forgot one thing, being I'm working on the F body. I've already got the cutoff, I've got the shades, I've got the parts. Hmm. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that's better. So, that's about as American as it gets there. I, I don't know. If you listen closely, you'll be able to hear an eagle shriek somewhere out there. <laughs> so, this is the front of the pulley on the pump, right? And <clears throat> I believe this is the bottom, and it's wet back here. And inside of there, there's a little Inside of there, there's a little weep hole, so if the bearing starts to fail in it, I believe it's designed to weep out of that, and it'll come behind the pulley and kind of drip along the bottom, and then down to the bottom of the engine and onto the floor, which is what's happening on that car. It doesn't seem like it's coming out of any of the uh, gasket areas. Um, I guess when the cam got installed, the owner that did it installed new gaskets with it, so I find it kind of hard to believe that that's what's going on, especially after talking to the guy, because he was real straightforward and he was a good, good, honest guy, it seemed like. So first things first, I'm gonna have to drain the system. Uh, there's a petcock on the bottom of the radiator that I'll drain into my new pan down there. It's fresh, because I'll be reusing the coolant. And after that, uh, it's just a matter of unbolting the old one and I'm hoping just bolt up the new one. It doesn't seem to be too terribly crazy. Um, not going to be the hardest thing to do in the world. So, we'll skip to a time lapse and off we go. And look who showed up. We've got Tom in the white C5. Hi. <laughs> So, got the water pump off with my pal Dennis here, who was kind enough to stop by. Yeah. He did I'm all sure the heavy lifting. <laughs> uh, we got the water pump off, the mounting, I guess the mounting pads all cleaned up with a razor blade and a scotch brite pad. We got the throttle body gasket all cleaned up, and I'm gonna take the throttle or the uh, thermostat housing off the old water pump and put the, the 160 degree thermostat into the new pump over here So the next clip I'll probably have the water pump back on because this isn't really that exciting to watch either. So I think when I was looking on LS1 tech People were asking whether or not you could use a paper gasket Which is what came with the gates water pump kit right here and some people said they used the rubber o-ring and I actually bought one from rock auto This appears to be the right one. So I'm gonna reuse the o-ring because the old one wasn't leaking um Anyways, I don't think you're supposed to use both, so on this car I'm going to use the rubber o-ring. 
So I kind of reached a stopping point tonight. Um, I got the old water pump out down there. I got the old thermostat out and thermostat and the housing installed on the new water pump. I got the mating surfaces of the water pump all cleaned up, timing cover all cleaned up and other assorted things down there just kind of wiped off and some of this, the schmaggle cleaned off of them. Everything's kind of ready to get put back together, but if you ever put one of these on, you'll know that it's not really that fun trying to line up these gaskets um, because you do have to turn it vertically, uh, obviously. And the gaskets like to slide out of alignment. So they'll actually obstruct a little bit until you get the bolts in them. Now what I'm going to do, I put a little bit of RTV on the metal portion between the gasket and the water pump itself on both sides. And the weight of the bolts here is actually what's holding it on right now. So I'll come out tomorrow when it's dry. So I'll be able to kind of flip it back up vertical and install it on the block again without the gaskets fighting me the whole way. And it'll be pretty painless putting it back together. It looks kind of like a lot doing one of these, but it's really not that big of a deal. I took off the idler pulley for the serpentine drive down there as well as the throttle body. And that's really it. Just that and the water pump coming out and that's all she wrote. We will fast forward to tomorrow, I guess. All right, it is the next day, and I would imagine these gaskets are nice and sturdily in place. Yeah, those will be fine now. I did find that I need a couple things, though. The first thing that I need is a larger worm gear clamp for the, uh, I guess it would be the lower radiator hose. This is the size of the one that was on there. There was barely a um, there was barely a couple threads on it when I took it off. I'm shocked it never leaked or never came off or anything like that. The upper one looks okay, and uh, I don't think that I need to replace that one. Yeah, that one will be fine. But the lower one is <laughs> unbelievably small. So we need that, and I also need a torque wrench to torque down the water pump bolts. We'll do two passes. The first pass will be 11 pounds. The second will be 18. Or, excuse me, 22. Up in the Corvette and go to the local parts store and pick up that stuff quick before you can finish it up today. Back from the parts store, I got a little bit of uh, door trim edge for doing the free ram air modification. When you cut up that lower air box, it might look a little rough with a Dremel. So this is just a nice way to trim it out. You can see what I did with it with the C6. Uh, when I put in the Z06 front brake ducts, I used that same trim edge when I modified the inner wheel well, and it turned out really good. So I'll drop a link below to that. Uh, I went to a couple stores and I can only find this uh, 3 8 half inch combination torque wrench. It goes 10 to 150 foot pounds, which is good because we need to do 11 and 22 for the water pump. We've got an assortment of worm gear clamps. Okay, I'll have one of them will be better for that lower radiator hose. And I got a couple of gallons of coolant. So we'll hop to another time lapse and start putting it back together. I think we'll have it up and running in no time. update. I got all of the bolts tightened up. I've got all of the radiator hoses on and tight. I think we're getting real close. I got to put the tensioner pulley back on here quick and after that I am 99% sure I can fill it and start the car. So the next time we come back I'll have the system all together and we'll start filling it and we'll be ready for a start. All right we're at the point of starting it. Everything looks good. It doesn't seem like it's leaking anywhere. I've got it halfway topped off. I'll probably put a little splash in there right before I start it. 
But um, yeah, to bleed the system on these LS cars, you might have to do two or three cycles of letting the thermostat open. Now this one's a 160 degree thermostat, so luckily it won't take too terribly long to open if it's sitting here warming up and it is a warm day, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, every time that the radiator thermostat starts to open, you're going to want to squeeze the upper and lower hoses a bunch of times to try and keep the air cycling through. And after a while, you should be able to see the coolant flowing through the radiator here, through where the cap is. So every time the thermostat opens, you probably see the level go down, and you want to add some more coolant at that point until it uh, shuts and the system cycles and it opens again later. So pretty straightforward. It's just going to take a while, so I'm probably not going to film the whole thing. It's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> it's being a loud car, and otherwise, we're about ready to start it, so here we go. All right, we're all topped off. I'll leave the funnel on top of the radiator there. We're going to start it up and get the fan going, get the exhaust out here a little bit. <laughs> oh, here we go. The only other thing I don't think I mentioned, you probably want to turn the heat in the car all the way on to high. So you're getting uh, everything flowing properly. Well, that's it. Now we wait. coming out of the defroster up here so it's starting to cycle through I think uh, just waiting for the thermostat to open so it's gonna be a little bit All right, it's slowly opening it's been about five ten minutes so it's taking the first bit of coolant now that open for sure. All right, so I got her bled, and coolant is flowing nice and smooth inside of the radiator cap housing. So I'll get her covered back up and shut her down. All right, so we're gonna go for a little drive, make sure the cooling system's actually all done. Um, so I gotta clean up the garage floor. Oh boy, that's hot. So we'll go down the highway for a little while and uh, we'll be back in a flash. So far everything's looking pretty good. nothing's leaking I guess is the big thing when I'm all done all right so we're headed back to the garage everything seems to be okay uh, no leaks that I noticed quite yet did have to add a little bit of coolant but no big deal Back of the garage and I got most of the mess cleaned up. Um, the only thing I noticed on the drive and I, I finally figured this out after a few days is that when the previous owner replaced the high pressure power steering line he overfilled the power steering reservoir. You see it like uh, it spills out a little bit and it's actually enough to get onto the ground so I have to take a little bit of fluid out and I think that'll fix it because it's way up to the top. out 
couple of sucks out of the uh, reservoir. You can see it there. Took that much out, so it was pretty over full. Um, other than that, everything's kind of dialed in. Doesn't look like anything's leaking on the car. And I'll nose it back in and I'll do the free ram air mod quick and we'll wrap up today's video after that. further inspection I am not going to be doing the free ram air mod WS6 cars are different apparently I've never owned one all the other F bodies I've had have been Camaros and none of them have actually had uh, it being open to the filter like that right from the factory so when you close the hood on this it actually does let air in right through the front of the car the idea of the free ram air mod on, on other models this little area is pretty well sealed off and you would drill, you would cut holes out of the lower air box so it can kind of pass through the front bumper area up into the lid. So, not doing that. Kind of surprised and I uh, should have thought that through. Since replacing the water pump and putting everything back together, I probably put uh, something like 30, 40 miles on it and I did that little pull and under the car, we are bone dry, which is really, really nice. There's little spots in the garage. Somebody spilled some sort of enamel on it. You might see one, that shiny spot there. That's actually not wet. It's the same kind of deal. But anyways, that's uh, about it for the water pump installation. Everything looks good. Same up on the top side. Everything's nice and dry. All the hoses are tight. Nothing seems to be weeping or anything like that. Coolant's nice and topped off. So I think that's a job well done on this car. So if you liked today's video, hope you give it a like and subscribe to come back for more. If you want to see more content on the WS6 or the C6 Corvette behind me, got a lot more videos coming. And I've been working pretty closely with UMI on getting some the rear suspension kind of dialed in on the car. Um, till then, I guess I'm kind of planning on putting lower control arm relocation brackets, a strut tower brace, and bolt-in subframe connectors. Might do weld-in ones. I don't know. I'm kind of worried about hurting the resale value of the car if I do the weld-in ones. Not that they're not better. So if you have an opinion on that kind of thing, why don't you drop a comment down below and let me know what you think or what might be better or pros and cons. Um, I put weld-in ones on third gens that I've had before and I've had bolt-ins on other fourth gens. Uh, everyone that's new to the channel, thank you for subscribing and all the support's really awesome. And if you're a returning member, hope you liked today's video too. Um, it's probably not the most fascinating thing to watch, but it did have to be done. And uh, something most people can do in their own driveway in some free time. So that's going to do it for today's video, and we'll see you next time.